In September of 2008, there was a one Wall Street dealmaker seemingly everywhere and uh, all the time. That was J. Christopher Flowers. He advised on the search for a buyer for Lehman, the bailout of AIG, the merger of Bank of America and Merrill Lynch. He was in the midst of all of it. Uh, Chris Flowers is the CEO of J.C. Flowers and Company. He joins us now in New York. And I think back, Chris, 10 years ago today, it would have been that Sunday, uh, you would have been uh, spending a lot of time uh, looking at the assets of AIG, I think on behalf of your own firm at one point, and perhaps even Allianz, and then uh, uh, there was other conversations where you were working with Bank of America and Merrill. When did you realize it was as bad as it was? It was a beautiful, beautiful summer evening, and I was walking down Wall Street looking up at Trinity Church. We'd put in our proposal to um, invest in AIG and hadn't heard back. Lehman was filing for bankruptcy. There was nothing left to do. <laughs> there was nothing but panic, but worry at that point? It was the next phase. You know, the, the, the effort to save Lehman was over and the race to save AIG was on. Did you think, by the way, one of the things, and, and not to relitigate the, the history of this, but did you think that because Bank of America was buying Merrill Lynch, that that was going to actually act as a firewall in this game of dominoes? Because there was a view, uh, and I go back, even look at the, the news reports the morning after Lehman uh, fell, and people were not actually that anxious because there was a feeling that maybe the deal that you had helped strike on behalf of uh, Bank of America was going to save the system. I think many people, including me, I will say, did not fully appreciate just how bad it was going to be when Lehman went broke. And B of A buying Merrill was one, one element trying to, trying to shore up the system. Uh, we've had a, a big debate about whether the government could or should have saved Lehman. What do you think? Uh, could have, yes. Should have, yes. Although that's easy to say in hindsight. I'm not sure it was easy to figure that out at the time. Why, why yes? I mean, Andrew spoke with Bernanke earlier this week. And Andrew, correct me on this or, or add a little yeah. color to this. When, when you asked Bernanke about this, his point was what? We looked at it, and it was such a mess. We didn't want to take that on to the Federal Reserve's books. Well, he had a much more nuanced view than, you know, over the past 10 years, uh, all three of them, Paulson, Geithner, and Bernanke, have talked a lot about the authority that the Federal Reserve has and this idea that you can't lend to uh, a failing institution that you don't believe has enough collateral uh, to back up the loan. And he said, look, it wasn't just a legal decision. We weren't sitting there with a lawyer looking at, 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 at it strictly from a legal decision. We didn't think it was feasible. We thought that if we had actually even lent to the company, we would be holding it up and propping it up at best for days. And, and that all the debtors would get 100 percent on the dollar, and then the Federal Reserve would be stuck with any losses on that. What, what do you say to that, Chris? Uh, I, I say, look at, look at what happened afterwards with AIG and with many other companies, and, and you can see that that, that doesn't really hold up what they did with, with AIG and, and, and support elsewhere, they could have done with Lehman. The Lehman decision, I, I agree with those who say it was a political decision. It was made you know, by Friday of that weekend, that that's how it was going to be. It wasn't about their authority and what have you. Because Dick Fold was difficult or because no, I, it was I, a, I, a moral, trying to make sure that other people knew that things could fail? I, I think it was political in the sense that the idea of propping up Lehman um, would have been enormously unpopular, and, and in that sense, a political decision. I don't really think it had to do with Dick Fold personally, and I don't think it had to do with the authority of the Fed. And, and in a strange way, even though I think it was a mistake, you know, as Warren Buffett said, maybe something like this had to happen for the American people to accept that more uh, extraordinary measures really were necessary. So, Chris, spin this story forward. Uh, you have a, a better pulse than just about anybody when it comes to financial services these days. When you think about the next crisis, and invariably I imagine there will be a crisis of some sort, what does it look like? Well, of course, it's going to be different. You know, you we're fighting the next war, not the last war. Um, it's not going to be like this. It's going to come from unexpected quarters. I, I think the system is much safer now, and I think we're a long ways. We're maybe not a long ways from another recession, but we're a long ways from another financial crisis. But it, it's going to come from somewhere, somewhere different, maybe some cyber kind of event, which, you know, is, the world isn't used to, maybe. Maybe the collapse of the euro currency maybe a genuine shooting war, something like that, but not, not the same old thing as last time. Chris, um, you have but a history. It, go ahead. Chris, you have a history of buying cheap assets in crisis times. Think of Japan before, think of Greece afterwards. There are two countries in the midst of a crisis, Turkey and Argentina. 
Are you looking at all at banks there? Is there anything that we should be thinking about in terms of does it get worse, does it get better? Um, uh, we do try to buy banks in times of crisis, but we have mostly stuck to the mature markets, not the emerging markets. That has its own level of colorful risk, which might be too colorful for us. <laughs> um, finally, uh, Chris, in terms of just banks and the value of banks here in the United States, how do you assess it right now? Well, they've had a fantastic run, and that's related to, I think, two main things. One is rising interest rates, which really help banks. The other is uh, an improving regulatory environment. And so it makes sense to me, with the economy doing so well, that, that banks would be, be doing pretty well right now. Okay. Chris Flowers, it's great to see you. Thank Ten you. years later. Thanks, it's uh, quite, quite a decade. It is. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. It's great to see you.